they started the new year badly. You know, if you go back to setting the jam, Brentford um, in the league lost 3-1, Liverpool, uh, which was a really poor performance. Then a couple of weeks later, lost 3-0 at Brighton in the Premier League and didn't really get going again to sort of mid-April. Uh, but Liverpool had a really bad period between that time and weren't good enough. I said, you know, I've said uh, a lot over this show over the you know last few months that I didn't feel Liverpool were good enough to make the top four. No, they, for me, they haven't been. The fact that this time last year you were on the the cusp of a quadruple, yeah. um, it, it's it's a significant drop off, isn't it? Was that just the the loss of Sadio Mane? No, in the club. What, what was, or was it just the age of midfield? But it, it, it aged kind of particularly in a couple of months, didn't it? Well, the midfielders look. Liverpool are losing three midfielders now. Mm -hmm. they're, they're going out the door. Milner, obviously, Naby Keita, Oxley Chamberlain, and you could argue, well, none of them were really first choice. Yeah. Um, but they needed to rebuild that area. With that, I thought it put more pressure on the back line. They struggled. And yesterday was a prime example of Liverpool getting stretched. You know, when they play a high line, Ollie Watkins got in a couple of times. And, you know, he got in as well and got a penalty uh, that obviously he missed. But um, that was sort of what Liverpool, and when they're not at their best, they didn't have a shot till the 31st minute yesterday. Liverpool, Anfield. That's pretty rare. So... You could tell this isn't the, quite the team, you know, and I've always believed small margins can make massive differences and that's totally where Liverpool have been over the last year or so. Um, I actually heard a caller into the game day phone in yesterday talking about the money that Liverpool spent, but they have spent a significant amount of money, you know, and they were kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with yeah. Manchester City last season. They bring in Haaland um, and Liverpool bring in Nunez who it still seems to be taking that little bit more time. But mm. but what else has to be done in the Jan sorry, in the summer transfer window to make sure that this doesn't happen again next season? Well it's rebuilding the midfield. Having a midfield that's going to frighten the life out of the opposition, that high tempo. I do believe Liverpool have forwards who can get goals. Yeah. Whichever will. I'm not sure about Nunes. I don't know if he's going to be one of them strikers that just misses too many chances. And it's just a common groundhog day. Oh, he's had chances again. He's, he's hit the keeper or he's put it wide or, you know, it's hit the bar. He feels like one of them strikers that is just... I remember talking about that with Timo Werner when he joined Chelsea and people were saying to me, I said, I don't know why, I just get this feeling you're going to be hearing that sad story all the time. Oh, he had two great chances, didn't take them. And, and you know, um, so I think Liverpool fans definitely are still a lot behind Nuno, um, Nunes, because he's a... A typical exciting player that Liverpool fans love to see. Mm. Unfortunately, he just looks like one who's going to miss. He's not going to be clinical enough. That's that's my point. Uh, on the game day phone in last night, Gabby Agbon Lahore continued his verbal spat with Liverpool boss Jurgen Klopp by saying that the Germans' absence from the touchline was the reason the Reds couldn't beat Aston Villa yesterday. Uh, Klopp, of course, serving a two-game ban for post-match comments made about referee. Um, here's what he said. Jurgen Klopp today, if we go back to Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool, they lacked intensity, they lacked creativity for at least the first 70 minutes. And that comes, Jamie, from Jurgen Klopp, can't keep his mouth shut, gets a ban, is in the stands, he's not on the sideline. Then players don't put in that performance if Jurgen Klopp's on that sideline. He wouldn't allow it. He'll be up and down that. Do you really um, think that game's 100%, mate. I've played in games where the manager's not on the, on the sideline, mate. And players, you feel like, oh, OK... The gaff is not going to be screaming at me. That was Gabby last night <laughs> <laughs> on the game day phone. And thoughts on that, please, Cass? Um, well, uh, as a former player, I never used to think too much of um, if the manager's going to be screaming at me. Um, <laughs> look, has, has Klopp, affected it? Klopp's a, been a massive inf you know, inspiration to a lot of them players. You know, he loves the hugs and the cuddles of everybody before and after the games. And, you know, he teaches them like his kids that. He just wants to spoil. Um, and he weren't there yesterday. I don't think that was the main reason, Jurgen Klopp not being there. I think you have to give a lot of credit for Unai Emery's tactics in the first half, especially where they look really dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> Klopp's been on the sidelines a number of times, especially when he was in Europa League finals against Unai Emery mm -hmm. and didn't get the better of, you know, the tactics that he imposed on that day.